Um, now we come to uh, a very interesting company from Istanbul, from Turkey, called Trentio. And Trentio uh, is the leading mobile commerce company in Turkey um, and in the MENA region, uh, with over uh, 50 million customers and 2,000 merchants on their platform, growing at uh, 100% for the last years, every year, and now expanding into different verticals and also different countries. Adam Inan, might be already uh, known to you uh, from one of the former conferences, is the head of marketing at Trentiol, leading a team of 50 people there, and he's going to talk uh, why, uh, how, and when you should take a multi-touch attribution into consideration uh, when you think about mobile marketing. Please give it up for Adam. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, we're, I'm going to talk about multi-touch attribution in mobile and the background for ourselves, why we did it, how we did it, and the outcomes of the whole, whole thing. Uh, I'll start with a very brief background of myself and my company, and then we'll tell you how it happened for us, like we came up with a new concept called marketing value, and then applied this thing to a multi-touch attribution perspective in mobile. I'll give you the numbers and then the insights we derived from those numbers and we'll wrap up with the next steps for us and the suggestion for you guys who wants to do, go from a similar process. So Trendyol is the largest e-commerce company in Turkey with more than 2,000 people. We're on the last one and a half years, we're growing 100%. Uh, it's been a company profitable for the last four years and uh, fashion is our core uh, category but we're also expanding into different categories that will come later on in this presentation and uh, we're covering 80 percent of turkish female e-commerce customers <clears throat> uh, we are a mobile heavy company and from about myself i've been at trendle for the last one and a half years leading the marketing team data science analytics user acquisition brand marketing and creative Previous to Trendyol, I used to work in the gaming vertical uh, for more than five years. I used to work at Peak Games, had the opportunity to launch Toy Blast, one of the top grossing titles in the US store right now. Uh, and uh, coming from a gaming perspective, I'll tell you the differences, what I've seen in e-commerce versus gaming. So let's start. Uh, the biggest problem that I faced when I started first in Trendyol is the approach uh, that that there were multiple channels, multiple sources for different objectives. So in gaming, it was a download business mostly. So we used to do a lot of download campaigns, but you know, 90% of the whole marketing budget would just go to downloads. In e-commerce, however, there's this unlimited number of things that you can do with your marketing budget. You can use coupons, you can use download campaigns, you can launch retargeting campaigns, there might be a new user acquisition, you can launch a new line, a new category, and there are a lot of different strategic objectives that the marketing can drive in e-commerce. So these are from different time intervals as well. Some of the, the campaigns that you're launching is short term, whereas some of the other things are very long term investments. So how do we compare all of these? Initially, we were just doing return on ad spend, which was a very short time interval, which was a, just a revenue perspective from the marketing value that we derived. However, we had to find a way to combine, to unify all these different outcomes of marketing activities. Because otherwise, as the marketing person, I didn't really know how I should split the budget between coupon campaigns, CRM, or like acquisition campaigns or download campaigns and so on. And the other problem with the e-commerce landscape is your priorities might change in time. So in gaming, we only, what we did was, was launching in a new country, we just want to scale up. However, in e-commerce, you might go into a new line you, and, and the whole numbers will change. Your strategic priorities might change as well. And what I've also seen is the, the, the capabilities of tracking, specifically in e-commerce, between web and mobile is massively different. In web, we had this sophisticated, sophisticated tracking capabilities in Google Analytics, which was allowing us to do a 30 days custom model attribution, giving a certain percentage to first click, to middle clicks, and last clicks. Whereas in mobile, we just start to say, okay, the only last click matters, which is intuitively not that straightforward, right? So there was this difference as well. 
So what we did, starting from like a year ago, what we started doing was we wanted to make sure that we introduce a new metric, what we call as a marketing value, that brings all these different outcomes of any marketing activities together. We assign an incremental value of each of the activities we deem important for the user journey in Trendville. And then we made sure that our mobile approach is similar to our web approach. So we, did, we tried, at least, a multi-touch attribution in mobile. And then we decided to do the same thing for the new buyer acquisition. Because looking at a new buyer acquisition from a last click perspective or the last session perspective didn't really make any sense for us. So we had to understand the journey. We had to understand the time before the last click if, if you really want to understand who affected that person to first time come and buy from Trendle. I'll, I'll go fast with the challenges. The challenge, obvious challenge is, of course, finding the incremental value. Because a new download can immediately become a new buyer, and a new buyer can immediately bring some revenues. So how do you bring all these together? You have to find the incremental value, which is never going to be 100% correct. But again, it's an assumption that you can change and play in time according to your strategic objectives of the company and your priorities. And of course, uh, mobile multi-touch attribution is, is inherently difficult because we don't have these technical capabilities at the moment, at least for us. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you have to make sure that there are a lot of questions. There are attribution time interval, attribution coefficients, soft rules that you want to apply if you want to include CRM pushes, emails to your attribution frame or, or not. And you can always play with these numbers as well. And there's this problem of tracking users cross-platform. Because a lot of the providers that you're working right now, Google, Facebook, Criteo, they all have SDKs in all your platforms at the same time. And they can track users according to their activity cross-platform very easily. Whereas we, as Trendual, and probably most of you guys, are not really able to identify and track marketing sources cross-platform with a neutral provider. I, I stress neutral provider because Google and Facebook are claiming that they can do it but you would never know if they're actually unbiased to, to their own sources, right? The advantages is eventually you have something what we call as comparable channels and sources. So we can eventually compare a download campaign with a new buyer campaign and a transactional remarketing campaign with a coupon campaign. That was the immediate advantage. Even if it's, 100, even if it's not 100% correct, we had a framework, a tool that we can do this. And we could play with the numbers in order to be aligned with the marketing objectives of the company. So if the company is moving into furniture, like in our case, we could easily adapt our cross-platform strategy to what we call as a marketing value and assign a certain value to it and boost the, the sources that brings those users who would buy furniture from us. And of course, it allowed us to see more visibility on the customer journey. So I, I'll just wrap up uh, the whole thing that I've mentioned so far about marketing value is, is the biggest problem right now is uh, you, we really don't have a great visibility on the marketing efficiency. We don't know if you're creating incremental sales. We don't know if we're creating the new buyers in, in the way that we have to look. So there are many challenges in the process. And there's unfortunately no neutral provider yet, as we know, uh, that could allow us to track cross-platform and that would allow us to have multi-touch attribution in mobile. And unfortunately, there's not many industry know-how on this as well. We didn't really find any articles that would explain us in detail. Either there were companies that were extremely sophisticated that they could build their own data infrastructure, like Amazon, like Alibaba, or there were companies who wouldn't really care about this. The last click was, was OK for 90% of our competitors. So these are the results uh, of the initial trial that we did for mobile attribution in multi-touch attribution. The, I didn't put the network names because it would be, uh, I didn't see any additional value in putting the names there. But I just want to tell you the immediate result, and that was a session in the morning, uh, was a, a massive increase in the organics, which is as, as expected. We are applying a sticky last click, mostly seven days attribution window that just forever stays with the source, right? If you have an attributable click in mobile. And as you start to diverge, as you start to, de to decouple the whole sticky attribution thing from each and every session, then you start seeing people come by themselves very frequently before a purchase. So that's the immediate result of the whole thing is, is a boost in organics. 
and is a decrease in a lot of the retargeting sources. Because as a lot of the retargeting partners have SDKs in pretty much everywhere in your app, they just send signals all over, they probably know when a certain purchase is going to happen, and they just shoot down all their ad inventory, like ad purchases and everything, super, super down the funnel. Which is as expected, right? I wouldn't call it a technical fraud because it's, there's nothing fraudulent in this in the technical sense, but I would call it a high performance fraud because you see that retargeting campaigns are overperforming in many, many different contexts. This is, as I mentioned, this is not illegal, this is not technically fraud, but this is business wise something that you would never have, you would never want to have, right? It's just not creating incremental sales, it's just cannibalizing from your organic thing. We did the same thing for new buyers. Uh, the results were even more dramatic. So there were probably the same thing uh, in the new buyer process because persuading a new buyer to buy something first time from your company is, is a difficult process. And people have to go in and out many times, like maybe more than 20, 25, 30 sessions to make sure that they purchase something, right? I'll tell you the insights from the whole process. <clears throat> So that, um, so that we, we can, we can, uh, I can tell you what we have experienced so far, is um, we've seen that some sources are actually tricking the last click attribution model. Not in the sense that a technical fraud, but in the sense of a business fraud. And we're seeing a lot of the low performing sources that we've seen in our adjust dashboards were actually not that low performing. They were, they were quite assisting a lot of the new buyers, a lot of the purchases, and they were in the funnel, either in the mid or the higher, higher funnel, upper funnel of this whole process, right? We're, we're, we haven't seen any differences between iOS and Android, but there were differences in male and female users. So we have seen that the male decision process was significantly different than a female uh, purchasing decision process. The other insights that we've seen is you don't want to mess with mobile web. That's, that's one of the, the tricky, uh, most difficult parts of the whole process. And um, push tracking is a decision that you have to make because they dilute, they just disrupt the whole digital marketing attribution models and coefficients. It's a decision you have to take. Maybe you, you want to penalize them a little bit because they, they probably overrule any attribution thing in, in your scene. Um, what we've seen very significant again is the difference between categories and it's very intuitive, right? You don't buy a toothpaste in the way that you buy a TV. The decision making process for buying a TV usually takes a lot more time and a lot more touch points than buying a toothpaste and our attribution model and the way we look at attribution doesn't really reflect this difference. That's one of the things that we want to do next in, in Trendual. And as I mentioned, it was a difficult process. We had to go all the way to Callbacks API. We have to agree with a lot of the partners to send us all the details about the session, uh, initiating clicks, if they have a URLs and so on. So it, it took us a lot of effort. So next steps for us would be to include uninstalls in the journey. Um, and we also want to see the effect of different ad units in the attribution model because we think that a click from a banner, a click from an interstitial is not the same with a click from a 30 seconds video. So this probably would eventually reflect in the way that we look at the attribution for those channels. The other thing that we want to try out is the numbers, coefficients of the attribution model and the time frame that we want to apply and probably the differences between different categories. We're not doing multi-touch attribution in downloads and I'll explain you why. Uh, but we plan to do as much as possible. If we can technically do it, we want to do it in a cross-platform way. So why not multi-touch attribution in downloads? Because I, I used to work in gaming, and our assumption right now is purchasing something is a much harder decision than downloading an app of like 20 megabytes, 40 megabytes. And from our data, what we've seen is the purchasing, the, the download decision comes right after the click. And it usually is very highly probable that that last click might have actually contributed to that download a lot more than the purchase, the, the purchase funnel. So that's why we, business-wise, didn't really start from there. But I'll give you the bad news. Technically, we can't do it as well. So Facebook and Google, if you're using one of them and heavily using one of them, they, they don't pass you the, 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 all the clicks before the journey. They only pass you the, the very last click. And I believe it's intentional. <clears throat> so
So I strongly suggest you not to do multi-touch attribution if you only do one type of objective of campaigns. If you're only doing downloads, just, you probably might not need that much. If you're only doing Google, you probably don't need it again because there is no problem of attributing in between different campaigns and different objectives. And I strongly encourage you, if you don't have the resources, don't go for it because it took us a couple of months with a lot of data engineering and, and analytics resources to complete the first trial, which we think at most 40% true. <clears throat> I'll just wrap up. Uh, it's my last minute. Uh, there's no one true model for attribution. It's fit for your company and for your objectives. And the coefficients for your attribution model can and should change in time if your priorities change. And it's a must because as marketing people, we have to align with the strategic objectives of the company. And our way of looking, reporting, and optimization should have a reflection on the actual reality of the business. And I would just suggest to you guys, if you fit the context of multi-touch attribution, just try doing it because it will give you a lot more visibility than your current visibility if you're using a last click seven days attribution window. And if you don't do it like 50%, like 90% correct, it's still okay because it gives you so much insights that your strategy and your budget can change that you probably won't need this additional 10% accuracy anymore. So that was all for today. Uh, that was the content that I've prepared for you guys. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, thanks for listening. We would have time, thank you, first of okay. all. Uh, we would have time for a question. Is there anything that pops up on your mind? Nothing. Oh, perfect. Oh, this is going to be an, an, a nice expert discussion here now. No, no, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very insightful. Uh, the question I has, what, what have is about multitask attribution. You presented, it's, if I understand correctly, it's only desktop because you, it's mobile. It's mobile and it's before it's before the install. It's only after the install, no. just to see the purchase. No, the the, the 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 numbers that I've showed you guys was our uh, revenue attribution for mobile uh, users. So we pulled all the data from Adjust Callbacks API with all the links and session initiated li clicks uh, URLs, and then did our kind of own attribution modeling uh, in our data warehouse. Perfect. Okay, so that's okay. that's make. Perfect sense. Thanks. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.